Welcome to ACC TLED Updates, our monthly webcast showcasing offices and programs in the Teaching and Learning Excellence Division, or TLED as we like to call it. My name is Dr. Rachel Barrera and I'm an instructional designer at the Riverside Campus and your host for today. We like to encourage you to tweet about this webcast using hashtag TLED Updates and hashtag ACC TLED. You can also direct any questions about this webcast to us via email at tled at austincc.edu. This month, we've invited the Dean of ACC Library Services, Dr. Julie Tudero, to come talk to us about the amazing programs and resources in her area. Welcome, Dr. Tudero. Thank you, and thank you for featuring Library Services. Oh, you're very welcome. We're very excited to have you here today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to ACC? I've been with ACC since 1987, uh, a little over 30 years now. And I was teaching uh, in the library school at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And I wanted to uh, move uh, near back to where I was born. Uh, and I looked around for excellence, basically, and asked a number of librarians. And they told me that ACC was the most exciting environment. And I applied for and was lucky enough to get a job here. Wow, that's amazing. 30 years. Yes, 30 years. Wow. I started out when I was 12. So. <laughs> so back then, 30 years ago, how yes. many libraries did ACC have? We had uh, Rio Grande Campus and we had Ridgeview, which is across the street. That building, the Ridgeview building, is across the street from where Eastview rests now. We also had a very small campus that had a very small library on Riverside in the exact spot that the Riverside campus is now. What most people don't know is that we had about six or seven what we called off-campus teaching sites, and my job was to run the Rio Grande campus and all of the off-campus teaching sites. So three with some off-campus sites. And so how, how many do we have now? We have, well, I always look at my watch and say, what time is it? We have 11 operating campuses now, keeping in mind that Rio Grande is closed for about 18 months for renovation. We have one that is opening this fall for my 12th, and that's San Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And then Rio Grande comes back online, and then we will begin relatively soon, I'm hopeful, on a few other sites, more than likely south. Wonderful. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of libraries to our communities and to ACC? Mm -hmm. The uh, teaching and learning opportunities that come from library support are embedded in the curriculum of higher education. We uh, have extremely expert classroom faculty who know a great deal about their curriculum very in depth. What libraries do is support that curriculum for assignments our goal is to make students successful and then to also be able to support faculty in their research. So we are a support facility and we hope to not only respond to classroom faculty and student needs, but also to be in the lead to provide resources they haven't had a chance to use yet. Wonderful. Now I know that ACC Libraries has, has really made a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, you have award-winning services, and you recently served as the American Library Association president. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us a little bit about mm -hmm. that? I, I certainly wouldn't uh, take credit for all of our awards. We had an extraordinary system in place when I started in 1987. Uh, very shortly after that, in the late 90s, we applied for and received the Library of the Year for community colleges from the national organization, ALA. And then throughout the years, we've applied for and received marketing awards. We've also received a national award for our online tutorials that are embedded in curriculum. I was uh, in a position, was lucky enough to be elected to the American Library Association presidency, and I am currently immediate past president. I can say it was a tumultuous year when uh, everything we planned had to be set aside while we responded to, uh, and I have to say this very carefully, political issues that arose that are very much threatening and still threaten students and their ability to use online resources with uh, FCC issues, with uh, fake news issues. And those are at the heart of what we do. So my presidency was spent 
focusing on the importance of community colleges and community college libraries. And then tangentially, I spent my time talking about the importance of what we do in our processes and services. So what are you the most proud of to date? For ACC in general? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that's a hard question. I would say uh, the staff, they are, uh, they are very expert in what they do. They, um, they are probably one of the hard uh, working groups that I've ever uh, had the pleasure to work with. They um, are not only proactive, but extremely reactive. They have a wonderful relationship with the classroom faculty. My librarians are faculty as well, mm -hmm. and their partnerships and their service, I think, are highly valued by the college, and that's very important to me. How do they, how does your staff and librarians keep up with uh, <clears throat> technologies and their level of expertise? That's probably one of the most important things that we do. Our field has changed so dramatically in the last two decades. We uh, assign people for keeping up on broad issues. For example, we have one librarian, Teresa Ashley, who is the expert on emerging technologies, and she does a pathfinder to that uh, every three weeks. We have a technology facilitator. We have people who are, we have one woman who's an assessment facilitator who uh, really spearheads what we consider one of our most important things, and that is to assess our reach and the importance and how students use us. So I assign some of these broad, very global things to people so they can do some of the groundwork first. And then individually, their roles and responsibilities include teaching, and learning, and so they have to keep up. Annually, we have a test that we give to our, uh, all of our employees, actually, and that test assesses their technology knowledge, both on the basic and advanced level. Wow, and how many, how many staff do we have for the libraries? Full-time, we have probably 38 librarians who are spread among the locations, and then we also have a technical services department, and we have two librarians there. We have probably another 60 circulation staff who operate the circulation and delivery uh, functions that students use when they come in. We have a robust um, group of hourly staff. I think all departments at ACC do. And the hourly staff are both librarians, professional librarians from the community. That total with our hourly staff is closer to 170. And then uh, I would say our full-time staff are about 80 right now. And you also have face-to-face -face and you have virtual, correct? Yes, we have extensive virtual and digital resources. We were the first to have a telephone app for students. We have extensive online resources. We have an entire library that's digital and online. We also have resources face-to-face -face with professionals every minute the college is open and then after hours I have live uh, reference help 24-7. Wow, it's amazing. It's, it's a wonderful service. We assess it all the time for its use and uh, excellence. We train those librarians. It's a service that is uh, international, so that in the middle of the night, at three o'clock, if you're finishing your paper and you need a question answered about citation, you might get a librarian from Ireland who's helping you. Wow, amazing. So how many, um, how many users do you get each day? How many people walk through our doors? We have, uh, virtually and digitally, we have uh, probably a million and a half users every year. In person, our two busiest, actually three busiest campuses, Riverside, Northridge, and Rio Grande, when it's open, have upwards of 1,000, sometimes even 1,500 a day, especially at Northridge. Wow, so how I know that you offer services to students and to faculty. Yes. Can you talk about the types of help that ACC Libraries offers faculty? Yes, we offer services to students, faculty, and staff. So our professional technical are heavy users of what we do, and certainly TLED is the model for that with offering design functions. We also help with that. We help students uh, complete assignments, choose resources to make them successful in class that may be on different or, or unusual reading levels. We have uh, a lot of online resources that deliver uh, pedagogically 
a stream, for example, if you learn better by watching a video than by reading, we have all of that. We also help faculty design their assignments for students. We review their syllabus for them. If they would like us to, we help them by doing co-teaching in classes. So for example, we're integrated into all the Comp 1 classes, and that's over almost 300 sections a year. The library has a video they use that we created. It's a 30-year partnership. We also have a presentation for all Chemistry 1 classes where our chemistry labs have extensive online resources for them. So we're very strong partners with classroom faculty. So are these the instructional sessions on uh, information literacy or are these different from? Uh, the answer to that is yes. They are both on information literacy, on a broader concept of critical thinking, and the difference between fake news and real news. So information literacy we define as identifying, selecting, and then applying resources for you to use. But the credibility part of that and the credentials of the author, all of those things have a new spin. We also assist people in using our own resources. We design extensive online web guides. I think I'm going to talk a little bit more about those in a minute, but they are part of what we do to support teaching and learning. And so if a faculty member wants to get in contact with mm -hmm. you to be able to partner in, in this way, mm -hmm. who should they contact? We have on our website uh, extensive section for faculty. So if you go to the library, which is linked from the home page, then it will uh, almost immediately pull up a page that's both for faculty and for students. They can also go to the library. There's one on each of their campuses. We also do extreme marketing for people's email, as you all do, and we hope this reaches them as well. And contact anyone in the library who will help them get general information on things on their own discipline. Now, I've heard that you've made some updates to the online catalog. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the improvements that they've been implemented? We have. We had our, uh, we've had two online catalogs historically. We were one of the first, we were the first community college for the first online catalog many, many years ago. And uh, we kept that for a number of years and then we migrated to another system. We had that for 19 years. So two years ago, it was time to look at different resources. I'm very, committed to economy and efficiency. And we found a catalog that we felt worked very well with the disparate locations where we are. And we, uh, we migrated to that last fall. We have two catalogs for students now, our enterprise system, which is our uh, linked, our catalog linked from our homepage, and then we have a classic catalog is what they call it. Both have unique searches, both allow people to do both basic and advanced research, and both catalogs allow you to use natural language for searching as well as Boolean language, which is more the historical approach. So we try to make, we try to meet people at their own needs. And also your website. Is there anything mm -hmm. else that you'd like to add about your website? Well, I want people to browse through it and take a look at it and note our online resources. In the corner of the front page, we have a series of posters that are uh, have little thumbnail images. We do read posters from the National Association featuring our own experts here at the college and the people who we partner with. The first one we actually did was of the police and the architects because they are uh, major partners in what we provide and deliver for people. So browse through the website, take a look. It's very rich and in, in very in-depth. Uh, don't miss the research and study guides. So if you're interested in a particular discipline or a major, we will have extensive online resource links. In addition to that, our guides now mimic pathways. So students who've chosen a pathway can now go to one of our guides and the pathway talks about what kinds of jobs can you get if you enter this field and what kinds of links there are. So it's exciting to constantly tag back to what the college provides for people. Well, you've definitely created something that truly supports ACC students and faculty. I think it does. Um, what about maker events? About five years ago, libraries stepped into the maker arena, and uh, some libraries are lucky enough to have extensive space to set things up permanently. 
we chose to use our space for student seating and for online resources. So we have pop-up makers and we pop up at campuses. We have uh, about 40 kits and these kits are circulated to students, faculty and staff if they'd like to, if they go to a reference desk, look in our catalog. We catalog the kits onto our online national catalog and we're the only ones to have cataloged maker kits. So I always liken this to the old popular science materials where people would make a clock out of a potato. That's sort of the 21st century approach to this. What is a, a, a technology driven greeting card? What role does technology play in physics? So we have from A to Z things that people can experience we have lots of maker spaces at the college, but most of them, or actually all of them, are geared to the class you're in. So if you're in chemistry and you have a maker in your lab, that's just for chemistry students and not everyone takes chemistry. Mm -hmm. So we advertise this for people across the curriculum. We want lots of girls because girls in science is very important. We want lots of differently abled people. We have maker events just for people who have disabilities. We also have maker events where we want people who've never experienced science as a, a pre-ACC student or during to come in and try out things that are fun mm -hmm. and to learn a little bit uh, about what we have. Our kits are also tagged to online resources that you can go take a look at now. If you go to our research and study guides and put in maker, mm -hmm. maker kits pages will come up and they'll tell you what kind of fun you can have. I know people who get these to complete assignments and to use with study groups. I know faculty who teach this out and use this with their students. So we're very excited at the maker movement. We've been doing it about five years and will continue to pop up everywhere. And literally, a, a maker kit, you're literally making something hands-on. Yes, and thank you for, for clarifying that. Not everybody it's might know what a maker kit is. Now. Well, it, you, um, Science making is from the ground up. So to take a set of wires, and a, I'm gonna use a real example here, a banana, and take five bananas and wire them to uh, play like a piano, it has the basic rudimentary elements of, of uh, science. Mm -hmm. And so we have student learning objectives with every single kit so that if you look at the kit and you say, what does making a piano banana set do? It has student learning outcomes for every science area. And so we find faculty asking students to check these out and complete them for extra credit or for ongoing credit in their classes because we have student learning objectives that help them meet their curriculum. And again, they can contact your local librarian. Absolutely, absolutely. Just walk into a library and see if there are kits there for you. They're popular, but we will make sure that you get one before the semester's out if you'd like to check it out or use it in the library. Wonderful. Um, so you've given us just an array, an range of, of incredible well, the team services. Has, the team say. has. Yes. You and your team. Yes. <laughs> um, is there anything you, you'd like to add? Uh, libraries are, I think, a cornerstone of lifelong learning, obviously, and uh, ACC's libraries are unique in that we have little gems on every campus for people. We check out iPads so that students can learn about the newest iPad and take it home. If you look at our uh, study guides, we have app tabs, so if you want to know all the tabs that have to do with radio, television, film, Take a look at the tab on the radio, television, film libguide and it will tell you all the apps. So we have upwards of 10 free apps that students can download. We have recommendations for other apps so that we try to integrate the digital world and the uh, print world. So we're there for you 24 seven. We're there for you in person. We're there for you online, on your phone, on your e-device. You can check out a laptop when you're in the library if you don't have one or if you've left yours at home. We are getting ready to be the spring uh, 
survey from OIE, and I'm very excited about that. My interest in a college-wide survey is to determine what other needs are not being met. So what kinds of technology can we continue to meet? Uh, to have a complete online resource, I think, is something that we strive for. It helps us meet our Southern Association standards but it also meets students and faculty where they are, and they're not always here, but they're always with us. Well, thank you for coming today, and thank you to you and your amazing team. Thank you, Rachel. That offer all of these services to faculty, staff, and students. Thank you so much. It's great having you. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Tadaro. Mm -hmm. And to all of our viewers, thank you as well for tuning in. For regular TLIT updates, please follow us at ACC TLIT on Twitter. That's our webcast.